morning and thank you for starting your day with us. We are going to be starting with late breaking news on the city's northeast side. Right now we're hearing reports of a heavy police presence at a home not far from Ritterman Road. Jonathan Cotto joins us live. Jonathan, what do you know? Good morning, sir. Good morning, Max. Right now I'm on the corner of Jolene and Bloomdale, a neighborhood on the city's northeast side where we're witnessing a heavy police presence right now at one of these homes, just a couple of houses uh, behind me. Now I'm going to show you the scene here and talk to you a little bit about what we're able to witness. We do know San Antonio police were called out to this home for reports of a shooting. We also know that they have their helicopter right now in the sky. What we've been able to witness is PD calling out for an individual or individuals to come out of that house with their hands up. As of just a few moments ago, we've seen two people leave that house walking backwards with their hands up. Police have detained what we know at least two people right now. Again, this is a report of a shooting and it's all developing. And of course, we're going to maintain on scene and uh, watch this story develop and bring you the latest as that information is made available. Reporting live on the city's northeast side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Make sure to stay safe out there. For now, time is 6.01, 74 degrees. It is Sunday. It is June 5th. Did Good you morning. make it outside yesterday? I did. So as soon as we got done yesterday. Outdoor cat. Out, no, outdoor dog. <laughs> outdoor dog. <laughs> I'm an outdoor dog, not an indoor dog. <laughs> Um, as soon as we got done yesterday, I walked my dogs, Sarah, because it was like basically the only window I yeah. had. It was between like 11, like 10 and 11. It felt nice in the morning with that rain cool there yeah. yesterday. Today, though, we've got an even smaller window to get out in try to be comfortable outdoors because it's going to be hot outside right now. The coolest temperatures will likely be 74 in San Antonio, 69 New Braunfels, 73 Canyon Lake, 67 Rio Medina, 70 in Bernie, uh, 69 in Comfort and 70 in Kerrville. Here's a look at today's forecast. Uh, temperatures are going to quickly get up there. South winds breezy 10 to 15 gusting up to 25, but by noon we will already be in the low 90s. 101 for the forecast high temperature in San Antonio today, complete sunshine. It's going to be even hotter elsewhere, especially off to the west, 105 degrees. Eagle Pass, Del Rio, 100 in New Braunfels, 98 in Kerrville, 102 in Hondo. Coming up in the forecast, I'm going to show you a neighborhood view of forecast temperatures this afternoon. We are just getting started with the triple digit heat. We are going to be seeing a long period of time here where temperatures will be close to or above 100. I'll have a look at that neighborhood view of high temperatures coming up in a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Well, the community of Uvalde is still very much in mourning after that Robb Elementary School shooting. Later today, another one of the young victims being laid to rest. Funeral services for 10 year old Alethea Ramirez set for three this afternoon in Uvalde. Her family described Alethea as an extremely loving young girl who was a role model for her siblings. They say she wanted to take care of everyone. Several more funerals for the victims in the school shooting will happen over the next coming days. Meanwhile, there is some good news. A nine-year-old Uvalde shooting victim is now back at home after being released from University Hospital. Two other victims remain hospitalized at University. A 66-year-old woman who's been described as the shooter's grandmother. And at last check, University Hospital saying she is in good condition. The hospital also saying a 10-year-old girl remains in serious condition there. And happening tomorrow, the Uvalde Together Resiliency Center will open a temporary location until a permanent one has been established. Now, the hub will assist people in Uvalde with a variety of services. These services ranging from counseling to even handling insurance claims. The clinic will be staffed with licensed clinical providers and will take place at El Progreso Memorial Library located at 301 West Main Street in Uvalde. There will be both in-person and virtual services provided for free. Now you can read much more about the details in these services. Just head to KSAT.com. Well, new this morning, one man in the hospital after a shooting at a gas station. So all of this happened around 2.30 this morning. This is at the QT gas station on Southwest Military right off I-35. Police tell us two men bumped into each other. That's when it escalated. One man got angry, pulled out a gun shot the other one in the face. Now that victim was rushed to the hospital. We are told he's expected to recover. Investigators say the suspect was last seen wearing a red shirt and khaki pants. And at last check, police are still searching for him. 
Some other top stories we're following this morning. A 14 year old girl is dead and eight others were wounded in a mass shooting at a Phoenix strip mall early Saturday. Right now, two adult women are being treated for life threatening injuries. All the other shooting victims are expected to be OK. Phoenix police say an argument out while about uh, well, while about 100 people were gathered inside and outside a party venue. At this time, it's unclear how many shooters were involved. No arrests have been made at this time. Well, the original Gerber baby, Ann Turner Cook, passed away at the age of 95. For more than 90 years, the likeness of Ann Turner Cook as baby well, graced the labels of a Gerber products. In 1990, the New York Times called the sketch of Cook as the Gerber baby as being one of the world's most recognizable corporate logos. Now, Cook's family says after her baby modeling days, well, she became a school teacher. She died early Friday at her home in St. Petersburg, Florida. Wow. Time now, just about 6.06, 73 degrees out. Much more to come on GMSA. Coming up a little later, we'll tell you about the new developments in the baby formula shortage. And just after the break, we're going to tell you about a local food pantry over there in Pleasanton. It's serving as a tribute. We're going to explain. It's already so muggy outside. 73 <laughs> degrees at 606 this morning. Sarah Spivey says, oh, it's only going to get warmer. She'll have our forecast when we come back. KSAT 12 celebrates Military City USA. Powered by USAA. San Antonio has been called Military City USA, and we're showing you why we're at the heart of military training. Operating for nearly 80 years and exclusive to Joint Base San Antonio Lackland is the Inter-American Air Forces Academy, or IAFA. Well, IAFA offers one of the most unique missions in the United States Air Force Arsenal, and that is we provide instruction to our partner nations in Latin America across 32 different courses, all in Spanish. The Inter-American Air Forces Academy has provided world-class education and training to Latin American partners, and here's why. Well, I will say with two words, security cooperation. In an age where our budgets are, are limited and our ability to do things beyond our borders is limited, we need partners. And we need it more than ever next to our borders. So Latin America serves as a very critical strategic point where we need to make friendships, influence uh, uh, partnerships, and of course, build such capacity that when needed, we can all operate in the same events, whether it's a hurricane or any other crisis, we can help each other out. Well, in Pleasanton, there's a food pantry that has been providing for the community for a year, but it's a story behind the pantry that makes it special. A legacy long past COVID is what a Pleasanton woman hopes people will take from her free food pantry. She tells Lee Waldman it's all done in the memory of her father. The mission is simple feeding those in need. Some way to give back with food, just because that is a need and that is something we all can be helping with. The Jesse's Snack Pantry has been in Pleasanton at the First Baptist Church Youth Center for a year now. Brianna Rodriguez started it with her sister, Marissa Partita. My sister has been at the pantry a few times, you know, restocking it and cleaning it and checking it out. And people have been there and they just, you know, an older lady told her, I wouldn't have ate today if this wasn't here. The pantry is restocked by Rodriguez and her sister and also members of the community. You can find things like baby food, even canned goods. But also a little bit about Jesse, the pantry's namesake and Rodriguez's father. It was December 2020 and it's just really unfortunate because he was fine and then he wasn't and then he was fine and then the next day he was gone. Her dad worked as a pipeliner for decades. Nothing finer than a pipeliner. He had to give up working on his beloved machinery when his diabetes took his eyesight, forcing him on disability and into the care of his girls. My sister and I, we used to have to take my dad to a lot of doctor's appointments and so we would say, Come on, Dad, we're going on an adventure. Unfortunately, COVID took his life at 61 years old after a short battle. Jesse's girls didn't want their dad to become another pandemic statistic. They wanted his legacy to live on. You're feeding a village, Dad. You are continuing to serve. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. And Pleasanton ISD has started its summer feeding program from now until June 30th. Their primary elementary and junior high schools are open for breakfast from 7.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. And lunch is open from 11 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. Monday through Thursday. All right, so you said it best earlier. 
yesterday, about 10 to 11 was perfect. Then it got pretty hot out there. And then it was like useless. <laughs> I just, I, I think I watched uh, Stranger Things. Nice. Like, uh, binged like the three or four new episodes, Sarah Spivey. <laughs> nice. Stayed in the air conditioning, yep. right? You know, our high temperature yesterday was 97, but guys, it's actually going to be the coolest ah. we're going to be okay. over the next several days. Uh, you're ready for something a little depressing? Let's take a look at the high temperatures over the next few days. Yeah, you're getting that right. Triple digit temperatures at least through Saturday, potentially beyond that too. And here's the thing, just about every day, we're gonna be close to a record high, some 10 degrees above average. We've already had five triple digit days in May, and we're probably gonna double that by the end of the week here. What's more is we haven't seen a 100 degree day in June in four years, since 2018, and so, it is unusual to be this hot this early. So try to find a way to stay cool. Splash pads, pools, uh, all of that would be good uh, out, out there today as long as you make sure to put on that sunscreen. Outside right now, not a ton of clouds out there already to start the day. And usually the morning clouds will help keep those afternoon temperatures down a little bit, even if it's just by a degree or two. But we're starting off with only mostly uh, clear to partly cloudy skies. 74 degrees, winds are from the south at about 5 miles per hour. Elsewhere, we've got 70 in Kerrville this morning, 69 in New Braunfels, 71 in Honda. 70 in Yavali, 73 in Pleasanton, 72 in Kennedy, 79 out in Eagle Pass. Here's a look at the future cast. Again, we're just going to have complete sunshine today. There may be a few showers uh, that develop off of the Sierra del Burros out in Mexico, but they're not going to make it close to uh, Del Rio or Eagle Pass. It's just going to be a hot day. Here's a look at those neighborhood high temperatures I promised you earlier. It'll be 100 in New Braunfels, 100 in Seguin, 100 in Converse. 101 in Floresville, 101 Rio Medina, 99 Helotus, 97 in Bernie, 102 in Castroville, 103 Sabinal and Yavaldi hot. Now we will have some relief in the form of a breeze. Winds will be from the south at 10 to 15, gusting up to 25 to even 30 miles per hour late tonight. The evening should feel great on the porch or on the patio. Uh, you know, temperatures will be in the 80s and with a breeze, it should feel okay uh, this evening. But during the daytime, it is just going to be hot. So here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast. We'll be spending the morning here most of the morning, early morning hours in the 70s. If you need to get out and about out, walk the dog this morning is a great time to do it. By 10, we'll already be in the mid 80s, and then by noon, we'll already be in the low to mid 90s. Total sunshine this afternoon, 98 at at two, but 101 for the high temperature today. That would tie the record for the day, by the way, if we got to 101 degrees in San Antonio. So why so hot? Well, we've got a heat high that's going to be pushing into South Central Texas over the coming days. And that's going to slowly build the temperature up a degree or two uh, over the coming days. Now, this time of year, Oftentimes, the only time we can get rain is from tropical systems, and there is a tropical storm out there. It's just all the way out in the Atlantic. Tropical Storm Alex, which brought a lot of rain to South Florida, flooding rains to South Florida. Alex will be making its way out into the open Atlantic, potentially impacting Bermuda by Monday afternoon. But here in San Antonio, no rain chances over the coming days. Zero percent chance through this upcoming weekend. And again, this looks like a report card, an A report card rather than a good forecast for us. Uh, again, we're going to be close to records every single day. But coming up in the forecast, you know, a lot of kids are probably going to be out at the splash pad. I'll have a look at your splash pad forecast and your dog walking forecast too. Sarah, next. I wish I could go to a splash pad. You we can. can. Can we? Yeah, there's know. one at the Pearl. I, Go I hang out. It's should. just kids there. Like, I don't want to. <laughs> I was there yesterday. There was a bunch of adults running uh, okay, in and out. Okay. You're good. Especially right. if you have a dog. Okay. It's not for out the pond. <laughs> or just set up a sprinkler. At there home. we go. Shh, that's too easy. <laughs> Time now, 617, 73 degrees out. All right, so a couple baseball games yesterday. Rangers fans probably waking up this morning in a good mood. Astro fans, not so much. We're going to explain in just a bit. Oh, I didn't buy another lotto ticket. 
Almost at 200 million. You can buy a splash pad at that point. (laughs) Several. Pick three, two, eight, two, fireball one, daily four, five, two, nine, zero, fireball eight. Cash five, one, seven, 22, 27, 30. Your Lotto, Texas, 15, 19, 22, 25, 28, 41. Here we go. Powerball 14, 16, 36, 52, 60. Powerball 16. Whew. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. We're starting off with morning sports. If you're an Astros fan, I mean, you got to be happy about the season, but you're not happy about what happened yesterday in Kansas City. So we're going to go right to the top of the third. Two down bases loaded. Yuli waiting for it, hitting the ball. I didn't mean to steal the thunder there. Good hit. Bobby Wood Jr., he had trouble grabbing the ball, but still managed to toss the second base for the final out. Astros manager Dusty didn't agree, challenged the play, but the officials ruled the play stands as an out. You can decide, but I'll tell you what, they decided it was an out. The final score from KC, Royals 6, Astros nothing. Don't worry, revenge coming today, 2-10 this afternoon, so you don't even have to wait that long. Meanwhile, up in Arlington. Texas Rangers playing host to the Seattle Mariners this weekend. Bottom of the fourth. Here we go. Two on. Garcia sending it down, down left field, and boom. They're like three to four rows back. A three run homer. Ninth homer of the season. Just enough run support. Texas wins big three to two. Two clubs will close out their four game series today. Again, an early one, 135. And if you're really a baseball fan, I think first game of the day is at like 10 a.m. Got to beat the heat. Mm-hmm. By watching inside, right? Yeah, <laughs> sure. 622, 73 degrees out. Which is ahead on GMSA. It was a flight to remember for a World War II veteran. We'll have the story after the break. It's been nearly 80 years since the World War II veteran flew a T-6, but that long gap is now over. All right, so veteran Jerry Auerbach, he got to fly for about 30 minutes yesterday. Take a look at the reaction where he made it back on land. How'd it go, sir? Pretty good. What'd you think? Let's do it again. <laughs> One more time. All right, Jerry enlisted at 18, enjoyed the Army Air Corps during World War II. He flew about 20 combat missions over Japan. Jerry, thank you for your service. Afterwards, he joined the Air Force where he got his pilot's license. He made more than 200 cargo trips to Germany. And Jerry's son says flying always had a special place in his heart and in his mind. He looks right at home there. He knows exactly what's going on. Yesterday's flight was set up by the commemorative Air Force who serve veterans and educate the public on World War II military aviation history. That is so cool. I love that story. Yeah. Hmm. All right, time now, just about 627, 73 degrees out. We'll still ahead on GMSA. Lots of questions this morning after reports of shots fired towards a Bear County Sheriff's deputy and his canine unit. We'll tell you what we know so far. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. 6.30 this morning, it is June 5th, and yesterday definitely Ooh. felt like it out there. You know what's crazy mm. is that yesterday was like a cooler day. <laughs> It was like, what, what was the high yesterday, Sarah? Yeah, it was so hot. The high was 97, but and it did cool. feel okay in the morning, right? <laughs> After some of that rain cool air moved on through. None of that for us today. At least it looks pretty outside right now. We've got cotton candy skies with some wispy cirrus out there right now this morning. Nice pinks and blues there to the sky. Fun weather fact. Cirrus clouds are made out of ice crystals, and that's why they look wispy. So they're up there high up in the atmosphere where it's well below freezing. 74 degrees outside right now. Winds are from the south at about five miles per hour. All right, it's important for not only us to stay cool, but for your pups to stay cool. Here's your dog walking forecast. Fido's forecast, I thought specifically about Sarah and her pups. You know, now's the good time to walk them. You get the green paw until about 10, 11, and then it starts to get warm. By noon, we'll be at 93 degrees and way too hot this afternoon. Temperatures are going to be climbing to 101 by 5 p.m. 
Pup's paws can burn very easily on concrete and asphalt on a day like today. But by this evening, things should be pretty nice. Uh, temperatures will be in the 80s. It'll be breezy, not too humid this evening. So very nice. But across across San Antonio metro area, this is how hot it's going to be today. 100 in New Braunfels, 101 in Rio Medina, 99 in the Lotus, 102 in Castroville, 103 in Sabinal, 98 in Kerrville, 102 in Pleasanton. And my friends, we are just getting started with the heat. Today is going to start uh, a heat streak where we're going to see temperatures well above average, close to and above 100 every single day. I'll walk you through what you need to know for the week ahead, whether or not we have any chance for rain in the forecast. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. We go back to that late breaking news on the city's northeast side. So right now we need to have reports of several shots fired and a heavy police presence. Not far from Riddiman Road, our Jonathan Goto joins us live. Jonathan, what do you know? Good morning, Sarah. That's right. I am on the corner of, uh, I'm on the 4000 block of Bloomdale and uh, Jolene here where we know San Antonio police were called out shortly after five o'clock this morning. Heavy police presence, as you mentioned. I'll move out of the way so you can take a look at how this scene is developing right now. Uh, from what I'm able to count, I know there's at least seven SAPD units on scene. Now, earlier when we arrived, we witnessed uh, PD officers attempting to get the individuals from inside the home out. They were calling them out to come out with their hands up in the air. Two individuals did come out of their home. They were placed in handcuffs and are now sitting in uh, two of those units that we see there, that you see there on your screen right now. So we know there was reports of a shooting. We, I can tell you right now, we haven't received any confirmed information, but there is a deceased person on scene right now. This is a developing story. And of course, we're gonna keep you updated with the latest, but I also wanna make mention of the fact that, that uh, they, there's a canine unit uh, going around the house. They've made entry, so they are conducting this investigation as I speak. Um, and as the sun's coming out, a lot of the neighbors have been making their way out, had an opportunity to speak with one of the neighbors who say they heard the gunshots they heard about nine gunshots you know according to his account uh, but of course this is a situation that is actively under investigation we're pending to hear from the sergeant on scene and learn a little bit more about about what exactly took place here this morning back to you in the studio Thank you, Jonathan. The community of Uvalde is still very much in mourning after the Robb Elementary School shooting. And later today, another one of the young victims will be laid to rest. Funeral services for 10-year-old Alethea Ramirez set for three this afternoon in Uvalde. Her family has described Alethea as an extremely loving young girl who was a role model for her siblings. They say she wanted to take care of everyone. Several more funerals set for victims in that school shooting set for the coming days. We're going to have all that information. Just head to KSAT.com. And new details continue to emerge from the events of the terrible day of the mass shooting at Robb Elementary. Now we're hearing from Angeli Gomez, the mother who said she was handcuffed by law enforcement officers before she ran into the school. So Gomez, a mother of two Robb Elementary School students, says she parked her car outside the school when she heard reports of an active shooter. She tried to go into the school to get her two sons. That's when she was approached by U.S. Marshals. Now Gomez says they told her she was being uncooperative. That's when they placed her under arrest. Uvalde police officers later told us marshals released her and she immediately ran toward the school. She jumped the fence, went inside the building and went to her son's classroom. You can read all the details of this story right now. Just head over to KSAT.com. And Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf is joining other leaders asking Governor Greg Abbott to invoke a special session to, to discuss gun policy reform. The judge formally sent le a letter to Abbott. So in this letter, the Bear County Judge stressing the urgency of a special session since school is just three months away from starting the fall semester. Now he also laid out the steps the Texas legislature needs to take to take action to prevent more gun violence. Some of these ideas include raising the age limit to 21 years old to buy long rifles, a red flag law that would allow a judge to temporarily seize firearms, background checks on all gun sales, and that's just to name a few. As of now, there has not been no response from the governor. Now to a developing story, an investigation underway this morning after shots fired last night at a West Side Park. So all of this unfolding around 11 last night, the Bear County Sheriff's Office tells us a deputy in the gang unit was actually training his canine at Rosedale Park on General McMullen. 
That's when the deputy says someone fired shots towards him. Now, he called for help. A park police officer found a man in the area under the influence of drugs. Now, he was arrested, but officers do not know if that individual is actually connected to the gunfire. We are expecting more information throughout the day, so make sure to stay with us on air and online as more updates become available. Some other top stories we're following this morning, an update on the conflict in Eastern Europe. President Vladimir Putin warning the West that Russia could would strike new targets if the United States started supplying Ukraine with longer range missiles. Putin did not name the targets Russia planned to pursue if the Western countries began supplying Ukraine with those longer range missiles. Five teenagers in the hospital today after gunfire broke out at a high school graduation party in West Texas. All of this happening around 1 a.m. yesterday near El Paso. Now, police say as many as 100 people were at the party. Witnesses say it was an argument that escalated to gunshots. Right now, two of those victims in critical condition. And at last check, still no arrests have been made. Three people are dead this morning and several others are hurt after a shooting in South Philadelphia. This all happening on Saturday. Police say they saw several active shooters firing into a crowd. The victims who were killed include two men and a woman. No arrests have been made at this time. This remains a very active investigation. Now turning to the baby formula crisis, the plant at the center of the shortage has resumed production. That company says it's prior prioritizing the production of specialized formula at its facility in Sturgis, Michigan. And the first products are expected to hit the store shelves later this month. Here's ABC's Christine Sloan. The Abbott plant in Sturgis, Michigan, is once again producing baby formula. The company says it will prioritize making specialty and metabolic formulas for medically vulnerable children and hopes to have the first batch on store shelves by June 20th. In a statement, Abbott promises to, quote, do everything we can to re-earn the trust parents, caregivers, and health care providers have placed in us. Abbott's Sturgis plant had been shuttered since February over contamination concerns. That closure is at the heart of the baby formula shortage that has many parents struggling to feed their children. We cannot find it anywhere. We have friends and family across the country looking for us and sending us any cans that they can find. In Indiana, healthy communities of Clinton County giving away what they can. I've had calls from moms who um, say, you know, I, I've got the last of this can and that's it. But they were running low on Enfamil until they received a donation from a nearby rehabilitation center. In a week, they had their hands on the supply with the gold lid. We call it gold, so we're sharing in the gold. According to the White House, the U.S. has so far secured a total of more than 127 million bottles worth of formula for import. Still across much of the country, shelves in the baby formula aisle are empty. Stores in nearly one in five states now have less than 10 percent of their infant formula in stock. The FDA says about 1.3 million cans of Gerber Good Start Gentle Infant Formula will be imported from Mexico, enough for 33 million eight-ounce bottles. Those shipments are expected next month and continue through October. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. Well, back here at home, it's a question we ask a lot. How do you want taxpayer dollars to be spent? Well, you can actually help decide San Antonio's next budget. The city of San Antonio's eighth annual essay speak up survey on the budget. It is now open for residents to share your opinions and have your voice heard. So the feedback collected from the service survey will actually help the mayor and the city council understand and prioritize needs for the entire community. That's why this morning on Leading Essay at 8 a.m., Laura May is with the city of San Antonio. She's going to be joining us live. We're going to be talking about the budget, how you can get involved, and if you have any questions you'd like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading Essay section of KSAT.com. Then join us 8 a.m. for a full conversation. Time now, 640, 73 degrees out. And still ahead on GMSA, our great graduate series continues. We'll introduce you to a bright young woman from St. Mary's Hall. Yeah, let's take a quick live look out of the Alamo City. Sun's out, 73 degrees, and it is going to be hot not only today, but in the coming days. How hot will it be? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning and welcome back. In today's great graduate segment, we're going to introduce you to a senior from St. Mary's Hall. She's gone above and beyond for the entire community every year, keeping up with and maintaining about 115 hours 
of community service. So meet Remy White. She's devoted her time to help local students and local animals. My dog is actually from Snipsa, so we always give back to them. And SA Pets Alive as well, just a lot of animal shelters in San Antonio, as well as Snack Pack for Kids, which we help get down, get kind of dirty, and we put together food packages for kids who need it, for, who have food insecurity at public schools, other schools in the San Antonio community. So Remy is a decorated student, community member, and athlete. She also has dyslexia, but she tells me it doesn't let her slow her down. For me, I flip some numbers and letters when I read. I would completely take sentences out of text. I would put one sentence way down the page, so I'd have to kind of go back and read through it. So it does take me a little bit longer to read. It does take me a little bit longer to process information. So I do have special help. So next year, Remy is set to attend University of Oklahoma. She's going to be studying global energy, the environment, and resources. She tells me she wants to be a helicopter pilot for the Coast Guard. All right, cooling centers around town are now open as we get closer to the official start of summer. And like Sarah Spivey said, those triple digit heat days. All right, so the centers will be in operation during normal business hours for anyone in the community. On the city's west side, there is a map with all the locations and hours. We have that link right now on ksat.com. All right, so Sarah, break it down. How bad is it going <laughs> to look out there? It's going to be pretty hot, guys. Okay. Even for June standards, we're going to be some 10 degrees above average. Yeah, so you're going to want to find a way to stay cool. That cooling center information is great. Perhaps you want to take your kiddos out to the splash pad today. Here's a look at your splash pad forecast. Yep, 101 for the high temperature this afternoon. No chance for rain. Winds will be from the south 10 to 15, gusting up to 25 occasionally. Uh, by noon, we'll be at 93, 2 p.m., 98, 101 for the high. And here's the thing, the UV index is going to be extreme today because we're going to have total sunshine. So skin damage time in 10 minutes or less. Please make sure to put on the sunscreen today. You're going to want to protect yourself from the sun. Outside right now, we do have a mixture of cirrus clouds out there. That's what's giving... Uh, uh, the sky that beautiful milky hue right now these are temporary we're going to have mostly sunny to completely sunny skies later on today 74 degrees outside south winds at about five miles per hour let's take a look at neighborhood temperatures waking up in bandera at 70 degrees 71 in hondo 73 in castroville 70 in yavaldi 69 in new Braunfels, 67 in seguin 73 at stinson and 70 in converse here's your high-res future cast again Sunshine, that's the big story today. There could be a couple of showers off in the mountains of Mexico, but they will not make it to Eagle Pass or Del Rio today. It is just going to be a sunny, quiet and dry day. Here's a look at those high temperatures. 101 is forecast in San Antonio today. If we get to 101, that would tie the record for the day. 100 in New Braunfels, 102 in Hondo, 98 in Kerrville, 102 in Pleasanton, 98 in Gonzales, 105 Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Laredo, Carrizo Springs, going to be very hot. Now, something that will help us out a little bit is that the dew points are going to fall during the peak heat of the day. So at least we won't have much of a heat index when it's the hottest today. But either way you look at it, 101 degrees is hot. Your KSAT 12 hour forecast will be out of the 70s as early as 10 o'clock this morning. We'll be at 84 by 10. Looking ahead to the lunch hour or the brunch hour, it is Sunday after all. 93 at noon and right into the afternoon. That's when temperatures are going to get very hot. 95 at 1, 98 at 2 p.m., 101 for the high temperature today. We will have south winds a bit breezy at about uh, 10 to 15 miles per hour. We'll see those gusts really pick up tonight. Tonight, not going to be all that bad this evening with temperatures falling into the 80s. Take a look at satellite and radar across the nation. I mean, there's almost a dividing line here between areas that are seeing rain in the northern tier of the U.S and it's fairly dry in the southern tier of the U.S. We have got a high pressure system, which is currently over Mexico, but this is a heat high. It's going to compress the air and move over south central Texas and make it hot. Take a look at the future cast tomorrow, 102 for the high temperature. And then on uh, Tuesday, 101, Wednesday, 100 degrees, and it doesn't just stop there. It's going to stay hot 
all week long with temperatures at or above 100 degrees all week long. And unfortunately, unfortunately, no rainfall for us. This extreme and exceptional drought is likely to worsen. And honestly, this time of year, the only significant rain that we get is from tropical systems, and we just don't see that in our near future at all. Take a look at these temperatures. Near records just about every single day. Our average high temperature this time of year is 91 degrees. The last time we saw 100 degrees in June was in 2018. So it's been four years since we've had 100 degree temperatures in June, and we're going to about have seven days of 100 degree temperatures here this week. Sarah and Max. All, All right. right, find a splash pad. Just be safe. I know a lot of people want to want to beat the heat, and a lot of people think they're stronger than the heat. You're not. Yeah. Water. Inside, hydrate. Sunscreen. Be Stay safe. Cool. Sarah tells me every day, 50 FPS. I'm like, all right, yeah. let's calm down here. <laughs> 650, 73 degrees out. All right, still ahead on GMSA. We'll get you ready for game two of the NBA Finals, Max. Let's go. I feel like, all right, Warriors coming back today. All right. Yeah. Hey, not a lot of people on the no road this morning. I mean, <laughs> there maybe, we go. Maybe, maybe we got it's two. The heat. Maybe it's the heat. <laughs> we'll be right back. Oh wait, we have Lotto. Pick three, two, eight, two, Fireball one, Daily four, five, two, nine, zero, Fireball eight. Your cash five, one, seven, twenty-two, twenty-seven, thirty, Lotto, Texas, fifteen, nineteen, twenty-two, twenty-five, twenty-eight, forty-one. Here we go. You said 198 million? 198 million. I'll let you do the honors. Cash out 114 million. Oh. All right. 14, 16, 36, 52, 60, Powerball 16, Power Play 3. Good morning and welcome back. Yes, the Spurs are not in the finals, but the finals are on KSAT. Yes, game two tips off tonight. Series got off to a surprising start. Heavily favored to Golden State Warriors. They were winning the majority of the game. Well, Second half. They drop game one in the series to the Boston Celtics. So the Celtics trying to keep the momentum going tonight at the Chase Center in San Francisco. But as most teams in the NBA found out this season, it is tough to win in Golden State, even though the Celtics just did it like three nights ago. So Celtics Warriors tonight, 7 p.m. Pretty sure it's 7 p.m. It says 8 p.m., but I think it's 7 p.m. Central. We'll see. Are you? Because I was like, 8 p.m. is a late game. It is a late. Well, Are, I have this conversation all the time. Yeah. I'm biased because I would love like a 2 p.m. Sunday game, but that's because I go to sleep early. <laughs> Everyone out there is like, no, Max. Yeah, so it is 7 p.m. Central Time here, KSAT 12. Don't miss it. And then, of course, you can watch the night beat afterwards. All right, stay with us. Sarah Spivey will have our final forecast when we come back. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. San Antonio police investigating a shooting happening at this home on your screen right now. Shortly after five o'clock this morning, at least seven units were called out to this home. We know two people are in custody right now. The cause of this shooting is under investigation. We do know one person is deceased at this time. Canine units zoning the home officers conducting investigations. We had an opportunity to speak with neighbors who say this is relatively a safe neighborhood. They heard about nine gun gunshots, but of course, the cause of this shooting, the motive is still under investigation. We'll update you as more information is made available. Reporting from the city's northeast side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. As you can see out there right now, we do have some of these morning clouds, but it's 74 degrees and skies are going to clear today. It will be hot. Temperatures are going to climb up to 101 for the high temperature at noon. It'll be 93, but 101 for the high south winds today at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. We should see some gusts of up to 25 miles per hour. Look at this. Oh forecast. my goodness. You know, if it was August, I, you know, this is not totally out of the ordinary mm -hmm. to see this many triple digit days in a row, but it's early June. Our average high temperature this time of year is 91, so we're going to be running <laughs> 10 degrees warmer than that, hotter than that. And again, this is the first time we've had a triple digit day since in June since 2018. So it is unusually hot to see this many triple digit days in a row this early in the year. And this comes off of the hottest May on record, right? Exactly. Hottest May on record by by a degree. So 
It's not looking good for summer, guys, if I'm being honest. Again, the only time we really get some good rain in summer is if a tropical system brings us rain, but that comes with its own set of oh, yeah, as well. Definitely. All right. Terrace Bobby, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. We're going to take an hour-long break for Good Morning America. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. We'll see you at 8. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Surviving a deadly shooting. Now telling his story at the Uvalde rally here in San Antonio, we're going to hear from survivor of the Pulse nightclub shooting about his experience and why he's in San Antonio, what he wants to share with the survivors of the Uvalde school shooting as he tries to help them heal. Another COVID-19 vaccine is being considered for approval by the FDA. How soon it could be available, that's straight ahead. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. All right, it's only 74 degrees now, but today and the next five or six days, whew, it's definitely going to feel like summer in San Antonio. Good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Sunday, June 5th. And as we were saying, if you have things to do today, I would try to get them out of the way early. We get up. Ice coffee. Ice coffee. We got to put that on the graphic. Yeah, ice no, coffee no graphic. More, no more hot coffee <laughs> the rest of the summer. It's an iced, iced coffee season officially. Sarah, triple digits for unforeseen future. For the foreseeable future. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I gotcha. Uh, but we are going to be seeing 100 degrees, not only today, but for most of this upcoming week. So as Sarah and Max mentioned, right now, coolest part of the day. It's 76 in San Antonio, 71 in Bulverde, 72 in New Braunfels, 73 in Castroville, 72 Uvalde, 68 Lost Maples, 73 in Kerrville, and 71 in Comfort. Here's today's forecast for you. By 10, we're already going to be in the 80s, 93 at noon. 101 for the high temperature in San Antonio that will tie the record for the day and we are just getting started with the heat at least there will be a breeze south winds 10 to 15 take a look elsewhere 102 in Hondo 102 in Pleasanton 100 New Braunfels 98 in Kerrville 105 106 degrees Eagle Pass Del Rio Carrizo Springs and Laredo but as we just mentioned just getting started with the heat coming up in the forecast I'm going to show you a neighborhood view of high temperatures for Cast for today and how long we're going to have to buckle down for this early season heat wave in just a bit. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. We are following a developing story. San Antonio police responding to a shooting on the city's northeast side from earlier this morning. Now we're learning one person is dead. Our Jonathan Goto has been at the scene all morning and joins us live. Jonathan, we know this is an active scene. What have you been able to learn? Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Max. Well, it's definitely been a busy morning for San Antonio police responding to a shooting at this home on the 4000 block of Bloomdown. Now, this is a neighborhood located on the northeast side. Now, we know San Antonio police arrived here shortly after five o'clock this morning. They tell us one woman is dead this morning. She is believed to be in her late 30s, early 40s. Now, what caused the shooting? They are telling us that an altercation between neighbors started overnight and now exactly what led up to that altercation is still under investigation. What I can tell you is I had the opportunity to speak with neighbors. They heard those gunshots pop off around 4.30 this morning. Some say they heard about nine. The police officer that I spoke with says that uh, there's quite a bit of uh, shell casings here on scene. Now we're still waiting for the medical examiner to arrive. And of course, we're still waiting to learn more details as this investigation develops. And of course, we'll bring you the latest as that information is made available. Reporting live on the city's northeast side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Later this morning, funeral services will be held for another victim of the Uvalde school shooting. Alethea Ramirez, she will be laid to rest later today. Her funeral service set for 10 a.m. at First Baptist Church. The burial will take place at Hillcrest Cemetery. Visitations are scheduled for today for other victims as well. You can find all this information. Just head to KSAT.com. Well, there is some encouraging news. Another victim of the deadly school shooting, a nine-year-old that was here in San Antonio being treated, has been released from University Hospital. Now two other victims are still at University Hospital. The shooter, 66-year-old grandmother, who is listed in good condition, and a 10-year-old girl, according to University Hospital, is in serious condition. So as much as we sympathize and empathize with the families of the victims who were killed in Uvalde, we won't understand what they've witnessed, what they're experiencing right now. That is why it is important to hear from a survivor. And 
We actually did hear from a survivor of another mass shooting, the 2016 Pulse nightclub shooting in Orlando. Now, he told us his story at the Stand with Uvalde rally yesterday. Camelia Juarez spoke with him and shares with us what he told other victims and their families about how they can start healing. Next week will be the sixth anniversary of the nightclub shooting, which left 49 people dead, 53 people injured, and the Orlando community shaken forever. I went for a drink with my best friends at a space that we've been to hundreds of times before, and a man charged through the front door with an assault weapon and hundreds of rounds of ammunition. The same pattern of violence crosses state lines to a classroom close to home. Mass shooting survivor and now activist Brandon Wolf says the tragedy in Uvalde is all too familiar, even down to the lawmakers responses. 10 year old children who went to school like any other day and came out of that classroom in a body bag. It is infuriating to me that anyone could look at those faces, could look at those families and say there's nothing that can be done. Instead, the city of Orlando put words to action, forming the Orlando United Assistance Center, a hub for victims, victim families and first responders to access mental health resources, anything to guide the healing process. They've had their entire worlds turned on their heads. And the very least that we can do is give them the resources necessary to find some healing in that, to find some solace in that, to give them folks to talk to, to give them what they need so that they can believe that tomorrow is worth seeing. The best way to make it through each day, Wolf says, is to do it together as a community. I would encourage folks right now Lean on each other's shoulders. Call if you need someone. Text if you need someone. Visit each other. Spend time in person. Make meals together. Uh, your community is what will get you through this. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Back here at home, how do you want taxpayer dollars to be spent? It's a question we ask a lot, and you can actually help decide San Antonio's next budget. The City of San Antonio's 8th Annual Essay Speak Up Survey on the budget. It is now open for residents, so you can share your ideas, share your opinions. The feedback collected from the survey, it helps the mayor and the city council understand and prioritize needs for the entire community. So joining us in today's leading essay segment is Laura Mays with the City of San Antonio. Hi, Laura. Thank you so much for making time for us this morning. Good morning, Sarah and Max. Thank you so much for having me on. For those who don't know, what is Essay Speak Up? So Essay Speak Up is the easiest way to get involved with your city government. We know not everyone has the time to come on down to city council, attend a town hall meeting, or go to any other public meeting. So we've made it easier than ever to participate with the city of San Antonio. You can visit our website, as you see there on the screen, it's essayspeakup.com and take a survey, sign up for a board or commission, um, check out what public meetings we have coming up. But the one thing we really wanna highlight right now is that budget survey. It takes less than five minutes to complete and your priorities will be shared with the mayor and council as well as city staff as we craft the budget for the next year. So this is the eighth year for the program. How much participation have y'all seen in the past for the people actually taking the survey? What a great question. We've been really happy to see participation increase year over year. Um, already the survey's only been open for just a week and a half and we've gotten more than 4,000 residents to share their priorities with us. But we want more. We want to hear from everyone from every part of town. So visit essayspeakup.com. If you know someone who maybe doesn't have access to the internet, you can also call 311 to take that survey. All right, so break it down for us. What does the process look like in terms of community members actually having their voices heard? Another great question. Your input means a lot to the city. Um, through that survey, even though it's just three very brief questions, we're asking you to share with us what's most important to you, what's least important to you, and then also share any other open-ended comments. Just looking at the results from last year, our residents shared that streets, sidewalks, and public health were some of their top priorities. So using public health as an example, last year the city made a record investment in public health for our community, and those investments have been continuing. So your voice really does matter, and when you speak up, your priorities will get the attention of city council as well as our staff. Okay, so if you go to the survey, on top of the survey, there's an open comment section where some residents have said things like uh, public transportation, for example. They would maybe like to see a train from downtown to the south or north or west part of the city. Building construction of highways only work at a limit. How much consideration do those comments actually get? 
They do get a lot of consideration. Um, I'm glad you showed here on the screen how those comments look online because you can actually have a conversation with your neighbors as well. If you agree with the comments or maybe disagree with the comment, you can share that there as well. Um, but while we look at all the citywide results, your council member will also receive an individual report that shows what their constituency is their priorities. So if you're looking in District 2, for example, and you've spoken up about maybe it's police or affordable housing, streets and sidewalks investments, you'll see those comments broken down and those will be shared with your council member. And that goes for every district in our community as well. So after over the last eight years, what have you seen has been one of the um, biggest results to come out of this survey? Or There's biggest issues? Really, yeah, for sure. There have been a lot of really great ideas that have come from our residents. Um, when we look at it from the district level, it's where you really see what the needs are in the community. Overall, across the board, streets and sidewalks tend to be one of the highest priorities. But then you look at that at the district level and you'll start to see that maybe senior services or youth services or affordable housing come up as top priorities. So when we look at these investments citywide, we're looking at things with what we call an equity lens, making sure that services are reaching the residents who need them the most. So in those districts where they've asked for more resources in specific areas, those investments are made. Again, looking at last year's budget, um, where some districts highlighted senior services as a top priority, uh, you saw more investments made for seniors, um, programs to connect them to the internet and get them engaged. And then you also saw reopening of senior centers as well post-pandemic, providing them with resources, with meals, with that social activity that they need to stay engaged as well. So again, your comments really make a big difference and we hope you'll share them with us. All right, last question for you, Laura, real quick. What does the timetable look like? How long do people have to answer the survey and then when is it finalized? Another great question. So this survey will be open through June 30th. And again, you can visit sacup.com or call 311 to take that survey. Those results will be compiled over the month of July. And then we'll be sharing those with council and with city staff as we craft that budget. The city manager will propose a budget in August and then we'll be back out to the community and wanna hear from you again through a series of town hall meetings. And then council will ultimately vote on a budget in September of this year, and then we'll start our new fiscal year in October. So again, this budget is really a roadmap for our city services for the next year. So participate, get involved. All right, Laura Mays with the city of San Antonio. Thank you so much. Always good to see you, Laura. And we can have all this information on KSAT.com later this morning. Thank you, Laura. Great. Have a great morning. Time now about 8, 12, 75 degrees out. A new vaccine could offer Americans another option in the fight against COVID-19. Still to come, why the maker says its version is different from Pfizer and Moderna's vaccine. And like we've been saying, it is going to be hot. So, City of San Antonio opening cooling centers, making sure everyone stays cool, stays safe. We're going to explain. 75 degrees at 812 this morning. Sarah Spivey says if you need to do anything outside, whether that's garden work, mowing the lawn, or walking the dogs, do it now. She'll have our Sunday forecast when we come back. Sarah Spivey's been talking about it. Record heat is on tap for this week, and being outside for prolonged periods of time could be dangerous. All right, so with that in mind, city officials once again offering people an escape from the heat, a place to go. Cooling centers around the Alamo City, they are now open. This is high temperatures are expected to last, well, for the foreseeable future. All right, the cooling centers will be city light libraries and community centers and will be open during normal business hours for anyone in the community on the city's website there's a map you can see it right there of all the location and hours we also have this link on ksat.com sarah this this heat is just brutal we're going to need we're going to need to stay cool uh, mm -hmm. across San Antonio. And yes, we are used to the heat in the summertime here in South Central Texas, but this is an early season heat wave for sure. Take a look at the forecast high temperatures in the coming days. We are going to be near record highs every single day, including today. The record for the day is 101. We're forecasting 101. Our average high this time of year is 91, and we're going to be about 10 degrees warmer than, than that each and every single day. So again, it is unusual for us to be seeing this hot uh, of weather this early in the season. In fact, the last time we saw 100 degrees in June was back in 2018, so it's been 
been four years since we've had a 100 degree day in June, and we're going to have several of them this week. Outside right now, a few cirrus clouds out there, but even those are thinning out. It's 76 degrees. Winds are from the south at about 10 miles per hour. We are going to quickly see these skies clear, and it is going to get hot. 76 in Pleasanton. It's 78 in Del Rio. 70 the wake-up temperature in Rock Springs. 72 in New Braunfels. 73 in Gonzales. And 74 in Kerrville. Uh, you can see that skies are going to stay clear for most of the day, other than a few wispy cirrus clouds here and there. There could be a few isolated showers out in the mountains of Mexico, but they're likely not even going to make it across the Rio Grande there, and it's going to be hot. Here's that neighborhood view of forecast high temperatures today. 100 in Seguin, 100 in New Braunfels, 97 in Bolverde, 98 in Canyon Lake, 99 in Helotus, 97 in Bernie, but 101 in San Antonio. 100 Two in Castroville. The further west you go, the hotter it will be. 103 in Yavali, 102 in Utopia, and Pleasanton should be 102 degrees as well. Again, 10 degrees warmer, hotter than seasonably average. Something that'll be working in our favor is a bit of a breeze, especially if you're in the shade. We're gonna have winds from the south 10 to 15, but later tonight we'll have gusts of up to 25 to 30 miles per hour. So actually tonight should feel okay out in the patio or on the porch. You'll have relatively lower humidity and temperatures will be coming down at that point. But still during the day today, peak heating of the day, you're going to want to find a way to stay cool. By 10 o'clock, we'll already be at 84 degrees. We'll already be in the mid 80s by 10. By noon, low 90s. It'll be 93 around lunch. And then the afternoon, that's when we crank up that heat. Temperatures will be close to 100 by 2. We'll be at 100 at 3. And then 101 for the forecast high, 4, 5 p.m. Even at 6, we'll still be at, at 100 degrees. And as we head closer to sunset, temperatures will be falling into the 80s after 8 p.m., and that's when it'll feel better outside. Here's a look at the satellite and radar. Unfortunately, this is not going to be our friend. A heat high is expected to compress the air and build over south central Texas. So what does that mean? It means temperatures well above average. Now, this time of year, if we get rain, it's usually from some kind of a tropical system, but the only tropical system we have out there is the first named storm of the, se uh, the season. It's out in the Atlantic right now. Uh, it's tropical storm Alex winds of 60 miles per hour. Alex is expected to head out into the open Atlantic. It could impact Bermuda, though, uh, by about uh, Monday afternoon. But again, unfortunately, Alex not going to bring us any chance for rain. And in fact, look at that 0% chance for rain in the coming days through this upcoming weekend. Brutally hot and with extreme at, at, at drought out there, it is, it is not a good picture for our summer months. We've had five 100 degree days so far this year. We're likely gonna see that at least double in the following uh, week here. And uh, we'll be looking at temperatures again just about every day, close to 100 degrees. Now, one way to stay cool, Splash pad. I'll have your splash pad forecast and when you should walk the dog because we've got to take care of our pups too. Coming up in a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. All right, 821, 76 degrees out. Well, coming up, more details on a possible new COVID-19 vaccine that's being considered for FDA approval. Good morning and welcome back. So another COVID vaccine could soon be available to the public. The maker of the new vaccine says their version is different from Pfizer and Moderna because of how it is made. Uh, the vaccine maker Novavax waiting for FDA approval. And the vaccine is considered a more traditional protein based vaccine. Novavax says its combined ingredients supercharge the immune system's response to the virus. Novavax's COVID shots already authorized in other countries outside of the United States. But on Tuesday, an FDA panel of scientific advisors, they are scheduled to publicly evaluate the vaccine and possibly pass it. Time now, 825, 76 degrees out. All right, coming up on GMSA, we introduce you to our latest great grad. He is from Clemens High School. Guys, he has endured so much uh, family tragedy, health issues, and now he wants to help others with his future career. We'll have his story when we come back. And at the top of the next half hour, the latest on that deadly shooting on the city's northeast side. Police still on the scene right now. John Koto joining us live from the scene with the latest.
Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, June 5th. Thank you so much for waking up with us on this Sunday morning. And I hope if you are watching us, you're inside, you have well, it's the cool AC now. on. It's cool now. If you have anything to do, I would do it now. That's what Sarah Spivey says, especially if you want to walk your dog or yeah. mow the lawn, Sarah. That's right, because the heat is going to be on peak heat of the day, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. today. We'll be topping off above 100 degrees, not only today, but honestly for the foreseeable future. So let's take a look outside right now. Some serious clouds out there this morning, 76 degrees. Again, this is the coolest part of the day for you. South winds at about 10 miles per hour. Here's that Fido's forecast, that dog walking forecast we were talking about. You got the green paw right now through about 11 o'clock and then it starts to get pretty hot. By noon, we'll be at 93 and in the afternoon, I'd say it's a no go unless you are walking that dog on the grass because it is just going to be too hot. Temperatures are going to be close to 101 for the high today. And again, that asphalt, that concrete gets very, very hot for those pups paws. By this evening, though, temperatures will be in the 80s. It'll actually be fairly nice and breezy this evening. Uh, warm. Though. 102 for the forecast high in Hondo, 101 at Simpson, 101 in Floresville, 97 in Bernie, 98 in Canyon Lake, even hotter out to the west, 103 in Yavaldi and Sabinal. Now coming up, we are going to talk about how it's this is just the start of our triple digit heat wave early in the season for us. But if you want to cool down, I've got your splash pad forecast for those kiddos in just a bit. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. And a developing story right now happening on the city's northeast side. One person is dead and police are on scene trying to determine exactly what happened. Jonathan Cotto has been covering the story since it broke early this morning around 5 a.m. Jonathan joins us live in that neighborhood. So, Jonathan, what can you see right now? Good morning, Max. Good morning, Sarah. That's right. Right now, uh, it's a very active scene here in this neighborhood. I'm located on the 4000 block of Bloomdale and Jolene, where we know San Antonio police were called out shortly after five o'clock. Now, let me talk to you a little bit about what that scene looked like when we arrived. Now, when we got here uh, shortly after five, uh, we showed up to what appeared to be some type of standoff situation. Several police officers were calling out the folks inside the home to come outside of their house with their hands up in the air. And that's exactly Exactly what happened. They came out with their hands up in the air. The sergeant that I spoke to with said is it was a peaceful uh, interaction. They immediately came out of their house and now again they came out here for reports of a shooting. Now three people are in custody right now as we speak and one woman is dead. That woman is believed to be in her late 30s, early 40s. Police are telling us that this is all a result of an altercation between neighbors. But what led up to that altercation is still in question, is still under investigation. Again, this morning, uh, SAPD had that helicopter in the sky. They had a canine unit that was uh, zoning and patrolling around the home, inside the home, to learn and to get a better idea of what exactly transpired here this morning. Now, right now, Max and Sarah, we are still waiting for a medical examiner to arrive on scene. Uh, we are still waiting to hear and learn more details on what exa exactly happened here this morning. Reporting live on the city's northeast side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Also new this morning, an investigation underway after shots were fired last night at a West Side Park. All of this unfolding around 11 last night. Bear County Sheriff's Office tells us a deputy in the gang unit was actually training his canine at Rosedale Park on General McMullen. That's when the deputy says someone shot towards him. Now he called for help. A park police officer found a man in the area and that man allegedly under the influence of drugs. So the suspect was arrested, but right now, Officers not sure if that individual was actually connected to the gunshots. We are expecting more information throughout the day, so make sure to stay with us on air and online as these updates become available. Also new this morning, one man is in the hospital following a shooting at a gas station. This all started at 2.30 this morning at a QT station on Southwest Military right off I-35. That's where police say two men accidentally bumped into each other when one of them got angry, he allegedly pulled out a gun and shot the other in the face. The victim was rushed to the hospital where he told he's told he's we're told he is expected to recover. Investigators say the suspect was last seen wearing a red shirt and khaki pants and at last check police are still searching for him. So we saw the Uvalde rally at Travis Park yesterday happening today, a benefit concert for Uvalde. It's going to be taking place at Cowboys Dance Hall. Doors open at six o'clock. The concert starts at seven. There's going to be performers like Easton Corbin, 
Kevin Fowler, other country music groups also performing. So tickets for the iHeart Uvalde Benefit concert are available at iHeartRadioTexas.com. We have a link to our website. Proceeds will go to the Rob School Memorial Fund. Happening tomorrow, a free mental health clinic geared for those in Uvalde. It opens up in the area. So the Uvalde Together Resiliency Center will open a temporary location in Uvalde. That is until a permanent location is established. The hub will offer a variety of services, those ranging from counseling to even handling insurance claims. The clinic will be staffed with licensed clinical providers. The temporary location will be at El Progreso Memorial Library, and if you're in Uvalde, that is at 301 West Main Street. Both in-person and virtual services will be provided for free. You can read more about these opportunities and how you can get involved. Just head to KSAT.com. In your morning headlines, an update on the conflict in Eastern Europe. President Vladimir Putin issues a warning to the West. Putin saying that Russia would strike new targets if the U.S. started supplying Ukraine with longer range missiles. Putin did not name the targets Russia planned to pursue if Western countries began supplying Ukraine with those longer range missiles. Three people dead this morning, at least 11 more injured after a shooting in South Philadelphia. So take a look. This all happened last night. Police say they found several active shooters firing into a crowd. Now, the victims who were killed, two men, two men and a woman, three people killed in total. So far, no arrests have been made. A very active investigation at this time. A 14-year-old girl in Arizona is dead and eight others are wounded in a mass shooting at a Phoenix strip mall early Saturday. Right now, two adult women are being treated for life-threatening injuries. All the other shooting victims are expected to be okay. Phoenix police say an argument broke out while about 100 people were gathered inside a party venue. At this time, it's unclear how many shooters were involved and no arrests have been, have been made. A man accused of killing and targeting and killing a Wisconsin judge has now been identified. The Wisconsin Department of Justice identifying this man as the gunman, 56-year-old Douglas K. Ute. Now, officials say the shooting actually happened on Friday in New Lisbon at the home of the former county judge, John Romer. Now, the accused killer reportedly had other targets on a list as well. Those other targets included Wisconsin's governor, Michigan's governor, and Republican minority leader. At last report, the suspect was in the hospital wounded with what police say appeared to be a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Time now, just about 838, 76 degrees out. I love this story. A World War II veteran takes to the sky again in a World War II airplane nearly 80 years after the war. We take you on his flight a little later in this newscast. And we have our latest great graduate. Sarah, you talk to the young man. Tell yeah, us about he's him. He's a Clemens High School uh, senior. He's endured so much uh, an illness, family tragedy, but he has overcome those obstacles. And we tell you what he wants to do in his future. And before we head to break, a quick live look out of the Alamo City. 76 degrees now. But well, boy, is it going to warm up throughout the day and throughout the week. We can see triple digit heat. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. Today on This Week, mass shootings, will Congress act? The blockbuster January 6th hearings about to kick off gas prices and inflation and the biggest primaries yet with so much at stake today. All the tough questions on ABC's This Week. All right, we are continuing with our great graduate series. So the senior at Clemens High School graduating in the top 1% of his class. He got to seven different schools. And get this, he's earned more than $600,000 in scholarship. He's pretty phenomenal. He has done all this while managing ulcer colitis. His mother died when he was just a sophomore. I spoke with this outstanding student to find out how he's been able to overcome all of these obstacles in his life. Devin Bosch is number six in his class. He got into seven prestigious universities, including schools like Pepperdine and UT, but has decided to go to Boston University to study medicine and physical therapy. Devin has been able to do all of this after nearly dying from ulcerative colitis when he was just a child because medicine for people that young hadn't been developed yet. He still manages his uncurable condition. Then during the height of the pandemic in 2020, his mom died suddenly leaving him to help his father manage the household and help with his younger sister. 
it was a little overwhelming at times, but you know, I, I like to think I'm like a really adaptable person. I've watched Devin grow from a boy who was in high school, a sophomore, and dealing with the trauma of the pandemic and the trauma of losing his mom, and now he's a young man that is ready to embrace the world and ride that bull for the full eight seconds. Devin's academic counselor says he's such a unique student who is able to gracefully overcome anything. A healthy mindset that he's going to overcome and don't tell me no, don't tell me I can't because watch me and that's what he embodies in everything he does. Devin credits his father's military background for instilling discipline in him, but he says his school's theater program has helped him get through his trauma. Use it as an emotional outlet, I will admit, you know, it's kind of helpful that way too. It's a fun place to be expressive, you know, and like you have this whole audience and this is a brilliant brand new kind of auditorium. Um, I don't know, I just, I just love being in here. I love the energy, you know? It's like a, it's kind of like a comfort place in this school. Devin hopes to be a physical therapist when he's done with his six-year program at Boston University. He hopes he can help people, especially those that suffer from inflammatory diseases like he has. He says he hopes his mom continues to watch over him. I'd like to think that she'd be like really, really proud of me. Devin was really, he's just a phenomenal student and we wish him the best of luck. All right, another really phenomenal story. It's been nearly 80 years since this World War II veteran flew in a T-6, but that long gap is now over. So we want to introduce you to veteran Cherry Auerbach. He got to fly for about 30 minutes yesterday, so here is a remarkable reaction when he got back to the ground. How'd it go, sir? Pretty good. What'd you think? Let's do it again. All right, Jerry enlisted at 18 and joined the Army Air Corps during World War II. He flew about 20 combat missions over Japan. And afterwards, he joined the Air Force. He got his pilot's license. He made more than 200 cargo trips in Germany. Jerry's son says flying has always had a special place in his heart and in his mind. All right, yesterday more than 20 British World War II veterans gathered over the weekend to remember D-Day on June 6th in 1944. The Allied forces landed on the beaches of Normandy. On that single day, more than 4,000 Allied soldiers lost their lives. More than 2,500 of them were Americans. A series of ceremonies are being held across the region today and tomorrow. And I know a lot of people are gonna be out and about for those ceremonies, honoring those who sacrifice themselves for the United States, for the Allied forces. And so, Sarah Spivey, for people out and about in the next coming days, in the next week, what can they expect? Unseasonable, unseasonably hot, guys. Temperatures every day are going to be well above average by 10 degrees. We're going to head into a triple-digit heat streak here in just a bit. You might want to stay cool by taking the kids to a splash pad today. If you're going to do so, 0% chance for rain, but 100% chance for the heat. By noon, we'll be at 93, 98 at 2 p.m., 101 for the high temperature. Winds from the south gusting up to about 25 miles per hour. UV index will be extreme skin damage time within 10 minutes, so make sure to apply that sunscreen outside. Again, we're seeing these morning clouds, these uh, cirrus clouds thin out, and so very quickly here, we're going to have nothing but sunshine, and it's going to get hot very quickly. This coolest part of the day, 76 degrees, winds from the south at about 10 miles per hour. We just got the pollen count in. Here's a look at it. Uh, an update for you. Molts have gone up a bit. Uh, they're now moderate out there, and, it, it, and that's because of the quick rain that we received yesterday morning. Uh, we got a uh, molds climbing to the moderate level. Grass and pigweed are present, but in low amounts. Elsewhere at 71 in Seguin, 72 in New Braunfels, 79 in Castroville, 73 in Rio Medina, 76 in Kerrville, and 73 in Bernie. Again, those cirrus clouds thinning out, and we're going to have tons of sunshine. A few light showers, storms possible across the mountains of Mexico, but they're likely not even going to be able to cross over uh, the Rio Grande there. And then this is a look at the forecast highs for the day. Yep, 101 in San Antonio. That would be a record for the day. It would tie the record for the day. 100 in New Braunfels, 98 in Gonzales, 102 in Hondo, 103 in Uvalde, 106 Del Rio, 105 in Eagle Pass. Now, one thing that'll help us out a little bit is that the dew points are going to go down slightly in the 
afternoon during the peak heat of the day. So not much of a heat index value during the peak heat of the day today. So that's something working in our favor and it's going to be breezy at times. Here's your Keysat 12 hour forecast will be at 84 already by 10 and then by noon lunch or brunch time, it's going to be close to 93. So it's already going to be totally hot at noon with complete sunshine, but then we've still got several more hours for the thermometer to rise after lunch. 100 degrees by 3 p.m., 101 for the high for 5 p.m. this afternoon. Winds are going to be from the south at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. This evening, it's not going to feel too bad outside. After 8 p.m., our temperatures are going to fall into the 80s. We're going to have a nice breeze, not totally humid outside. Side, so it'll feel great this evening, but until then it's just going to be hot. There's plenty of rain for the northern tier of the United States and even down toward Oklahoma City right now, but a heat high is going to be settling over south central Texas, compressing the air in rising that uh, afternoon high temperature. So take a look at the forecast highs. Tomorrow will be at 102 in San Antonio. That would be a record for the day. By when Tuesday will be at 101 and Wednesday around 100, 101 degrees as well. We are in it for the long haul. This triple digit heat wave is fairly early. The last time we saw 100 degrees in June was in 2018, and we usually see these kinds of temperatures in August, not early June. And unfortunately, it's going to stay dry too. Extreme and exceptional drought is likely only going to get worse. This is not a good sign for the summer months. You know, honestly, uh, in the summer months, most of our rain comes from any kind of tropical systems, and the only tropical system out there right now, Tropical Storm Alex, is way out in the open Atlantic. So we are in for a long haul when it comes to the heat. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. All right, and a reminder, if anyone out there doesn't have access to stay cool, we have those cooling centers open in and around San Antonio. Time now, just about 8.50, 77 degrees out. All right, tomorrow on GMSA, moving season is mm. about to be in full swing. Angie's List gives us the top tips that will have your moving process a lot less stressful. KSAT 12 celebrates Military City USA, powered by USAA. San Antonio has been called Military City USA, and we're showing you why we're at the heart of military training. Operating for nearly 80 years and exclusive to Joint Base San Antonio Lackland is the Inter-American Air Forces Academy, or IAFA. Well, IAFA offers one of the most unique missions in the United States Air Force Arsenal, and that is we provide instruction to our partner nations in Latin America across 32 different courses, all in Spanish. The Inter-American Air Forces Academy has provided world-class education and training to Latin American partners, and here's why. Well, I will say with two words, security cooperation. In an age where our budgets are, are limited and our ability to do things beyond our borders is limited, we need partners. And we need it more than ever next to our borders. So Latin America serves as a very critical strategic point where we need to make friendships, influence uh, uh, partnerships, and of course build such capacity that when needed, we can all operate in the same events, whether it's a hurricane or any other crisis, we can help each other out. It's already 79 degrees outside right now. By 10, we'll be at 84, and by noon, we'll be at 93. 101 for the high temperature this afternoon under sunny skies. We're going to have south winds at 10 to 15, gusting up to 25 this evening. It should not be all that bad this evening. I mean, by 10, we'll be at 83 degrees with a nice breeze, but still most of the day going to be hot, and then we're going to have consecutive days in a row with temperatures at or above 100 degrees. The last time we saw 100 in June was 2018, and the last time we saw three 100 degree days in a row in early June was before 2010, so this is unusually hot out there. Does this there. have to do with La Nina and us not having a lot of rain La this Nina's, season? La Nina is a big factor to okay. it. It creates a drier and warmer weather pattern, but here's the kicker. Climate change puts us over the edge there and gives us a degree mm. or two increase. And so that's why we're seeing a hot start to June. All right, just an important <laughs> reminder, everyone out there, if you do not have a safe place to be, this heat is no joke. We have no the joke. cooling centers open in and around San Antonio. If you have any questions about them, we have all those answers. Just head to KSAT.com. Have a great Sunday.